Round the cogs. Hi guys, welcome to my channel, The Fulfillment. I am Asik Iqbal. Today I will discuss on the topic, what is tragedy. We the general persons very often utter this word tragedy. We say his life is tragic, my life is tragedy, etc. etc. We even go to the theater to enjoy the tragedy, to enjoy the mood of tragedy. We go to watch the great tragedies like the Macbeth, Hamlet, King Lear, etc. etc. But we even don't know what a tragedy is. That's why I will discuss this in this video. Even this topic, that is, what is tragedy, is belong to the syllabus of English honors of various universities belonging to the different corners of the world. So, if the students of English honors, they watch this video, they will also be benefited. This video will be very helpful to know what the tragedy is. The popular notion regards tragedy as a type of play which depicts the suffering of a man who falls from happy state to misery. It involves a complete reversal of fortune, ending sadly and inevitably in the death of principal character. The popular notion finds its best expression in the speech of Mong, a famous character in Chaucer's The Canterbury Tales. Tragedy is to say in a certain story, as old books make in us misery of him that stood in great prosperity, and is he fallen out of high degree into misery and ended wretchedly. So the popular notion is finally expressed in this speech of the monk, a character of the immortal creation, the Canterbury Tales by Chaucer, the father of English poetry. The truth of the popular notion cannot be denied. Tragedy, in fact, presents the spectacle of human sufferings, the Individual is a victim of the reversal of fortunes. The popular notion can be best understood when we justify this principle in regard of the Greek tragedies, in regard of the tragedies like Macbeth, Hamlet, King Lear, etc. But if we justify Tragedy as a literary art, these popular notions seems to be inadequate. Because the tragedy may end in the death of the principal character. A drama may end in the death of the principal character. But it will not be regarded a tragedy as in the case of Doctor's Dilemma by Shaw. Okay? So, the popular notion is not properly justified for all kinds of tragedies. In determining the characteristic feature of tragic art, we must look into three elements of tragedy. First of all, its material. Secondly, its mode of presentation. And thirdly, its emotional effect. Aristotle first, in his book Poetics, gives the description of the tragic materials. He says that a tragedy must be an imitation of human action, which is serious and complete in itself. So it is clear that tragedy should be the spectacular presentation of human action. The human action must be serious. The term seriousness dignifies that it involves the sufferings of human beings. And it must deal with the fundamental issues of life, 
its morality, its existence, and its destiny. When an individual becomes a victim of the antagonistic forces, he has to go painful sufferings, he has to go through the reversal of fortunes. And his sufferings and agony are the raw materials of a tragedy. Again, these raw materials should be complete in itself. That means that tragedy must have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Almost all the tragedies, Senecan, Elizabethan, Shakespearean, and even the modern tragedies follow this rule of Aristotle. But now another point I have to discuss to clarify the materials of the tragedy. What kind of person should be the tragic protagonist? Should be a tragic hero or tragic heroine? Let us discuss on this matter. Aristotle says that a tragic protagonist must be an intermediate kind of person, neither preeminently virtuous or not just preeminently wicked or vicious, one in the enjoyment, however, of greater reputation and prosperity. So it is clear that the tragic protagonist is a great man, is a good man, but he has to suffer greatly due to his error of judgment or flaw in his character. And that is called hamartia in the language of Aristotle. But if the person is totally bad man, his sufferings will not arouse in our mind the sense of pity and fear. His sufferings will satisfy our mind that the poetic justice Justice is done. If the tragic protagonist is a good man, totally good man, his sufferings will also not be able to arouse the sense of pity and terror. That's why the tragic protagonist must be an intermediate kind of person who once upon a time was a great man, was a man of reputation, but ultimately, he or she has to suffer due to his or her flaw or a road of judgment. If we justify the characters of Macbeth, of William Shakespeare's tragedy, Macbeth, we find that Macbeth at the very beginning was a very loyal general to Duncan, the king of Scotland. He was the Valor's minion. But this great man has to fall from higher state to misery. Why? Because his error of judgment. Judgment of what? Judgment of the prophecies of the weird systems. That is, the prophecies of the witches. And ultimately, he has to suffer greatly and he is killed by Macduff, another general. His sufferings evokes in our mind a sense of pity and terror. That's why he is a tragic hero. At the same time, when we will discuss the character of Hamlet, of the drama Hamlet by William Shakespeare, we find that Hamlet is a good character. He is very kind, impressive, yet he has a flaw in his character. He is indecisive. It is his indecisive mood. It is due to his indecision he has to suffer greatly. It causes his death and that of many others. That's why 
Hamlet is a tragic hero. In the King Lear, the King Lear also is also a tragic character because at the very beginning he does a wrong. To distribute his kingdom among his daughters by hearing how much they love the king. And ultimately, due to this error, he has to suffer greatly and die. That's why his suffering evokes in our mind a sense of pity and terror. That's why he is a tragic character. Oh, oh, oh. Owl! Oh, you are man of stones! But an owl is not a tragic character. He is a villain. Because from the very beginning, Iago is wicked. Okay? So, the tragic hero or heroine must be an intermediate kind of person. And he has to suffer due to his error of judgment. Now I discuss on the mode of tragic presentation. Here Aristotle says that the materials of tragedy should be presented through action. The human action should be acted by the players of the dramatists. It never be recited. And the action should be placed by virtue of dialogues. And the situation should be developed by use of chorus, songs, soliloquies, etc. And the presentation should be vivid. Next point, that is the final point, Aristotle gives the description. What is this? That is the emotional effect of tragedy. There are certain emotions of human life which do not get any outlet. The emotions, especially those of pity and fear, are not satisfied in our civilized life. But when we see a tragedy, when we watch a tragedy, these emotions are satisfied by virtue of studying events Situation, dialogues. Need some help? Oh, cruel! Ah! Ah! <laughs> so, all the suppressed emotions are passed. All the suppressed emotion get an outlet to be passed. Like the human body after purgation. And it is the most important point of a tragedy that the tragedy should have the emotional effect that is catharsis or purgation. So, up to this portion, I have discussed in regard of the principles of Aristotle the three components of tragic art. Firstly, the materials. Secondly, mode of presentation and thirdly that is its emotional effect. Now justifying all this we may say that these principles in regard of discussing what is tragedy is very very important. Aristotle framed his definition from a meticulous study of Greek tragedy. Subsequently the tragic art has been developed in the hands of Shakespeare and many other dramatists. So, his principles are good for the Greek tragedies, but subsequent tragedies, they have been developed in the hands of various dramatists. Therefore, the principles of Aristotle are inadequate for the clarification of tragic art of those tragedies. Whatever may be, his principles gave for the first time a glimpse of idea regarding the matter 
what is a tragedy? Modern tragedies have been developed in various spheres like the use of dramatic irony, use of comic relief, the duration of tragic action, the characteristics of tragic art, etc. Nevertheless, the principles of tragedy that Aristotle dictated is even today relevant to have an idea what the tragedy is. We will never be able to understand the tragedy totally disregarding the concepts of Aristotle. So Aristotle is still today relevant for the scholars to have an idea of tragedy. This is the end of my video. If you like this video, if you think it is helpful, please share, please subscribe. Thanks a lot.